This is hair coloring and on page 656, glossary says uh, an activator, which is an oxidizer consisting of powdered sulfate salt that is added to hair color lighteners and hydrogen peroxide to increase the chemical action of the product. What that is, is the developer that goes into the color in order to set the color. Color cannot set itself, so that activated is the hydrogen peroxide. It comes in 20 and 40 volume. 20 volume is a deposit. 40 is a bleaching agent. Then you have aniline derivatives, which are your permanent hair colors. Uh, uncolored dye persecuted per that combined with hydrogen peroxide to form a larger permanent color molecule in the cortex. The ingredient that requires a patch test. And a patch test is before you do any hair color, you do a patch test. You can do it behind the ear, or in the bend of the elbow. If redness appear, you cannot use that on that custom. You would have to find an alternative method. Okay, a base color is the predominant tone of an existing color. Uh, the colors are, we have primary colors, and all the other colors, whatever we use, comes from those three primary colors. Mixing of dyes in the uh, schools and in the shops is done with primary colors. Uh, Analyze the ribbon. Uncolored persecutors that combine with hydrogen peroxide to form larger permanent color molecules in the cortex. The ingredient that requires a patch test. Patch test is just what I said. Patch test, predisposition test, skin test, all the same. Uh, base color, the predominant tone of an existing color. Whatever color you use, one color is going to outweigh and be more predominant over the other colors. So this is what uh, predominant colors are. Uh, you have a Cap techniques. On page 663, coloring or lightening technique that involves pulling strands of hair through a perforated cap with a plastic or metal hook. That's when you cannot use the uh, color on the skin. You have to use the cap. Either you end up with skin burns or uh, damage to the scalp. So when you pull it through a perforated cap, it's a method, that's what's called the uh, cap technique. Color filler. Color fillers equalize porosity and deposit color in one application to provide a uniform contributing pigment to on pre-lightened hair. What they are talking about is color fillers, that some hair don't bleach out like it should. So therefore, you use a color filler to equalize the color in the hair. Uh, complementary colors on page four, 645, a primary and a secondary color positioned across opposite each other on the color wheel. Say for instance, if you had red and yellow, it would make orange, okay? The person's hair would probably come out orange looking. So then you would have to go back and redo the hair. Uh, contributing pigment, page 644. Pigment that lies under the natural hair color that is exposed when the natural color is lightened. Okay, the natural hair color is basically brown, Orientals, black, but it has, our hair has brown and red pigments in it. So this is the colors that you get when you are 
pigment set line under the natural color. Your natural colors usually only Orientals and most Asians have black hair to a degree. So we got that uh, pigment that lies under the natural colors that is exposed when the natural color is light. That uh, contributing pigment, pigment that lies under Pigment that lies under the natural hair that is exposed when the natural color is light. Okay. Uh, go back. Complementary colors. The primary and secondary color position opposite each other on the color wheel. This is how you make your colors uh, if you want lightest blonde or subtle blonde or if you want dark brown or light brown. This is your complementary colors, the primary and secondary colors. Contributing a demi-permanent hair color. Page 651, it did posit only. Product similar to semi-permanent but longer lasting. Demi-permanent can last up to 20 shampoos because it is not permanent, but it's almost permanent. So you can use a demi-permanent color and get approximately 20 shampoos. You just can't use a strong alkaline shampoo in the process of uh, cleaning your hair with it. Uh, developer. A developer is also known as an oxidizing agent or catalyst. When mixed with an oxidizing hair color, supplies the necessary oxygen gas to develop color molecules and create a change in the color. The hydrogen peroxide's purpose is to go in there and break down the color pigment and merge with them to get a color for the hair, to put on the hair, to change the color of the hair. You cannot put a, a color out of the bottle on the hair and it lasts. You must have an oxidizing agent, which is your hydrogen peroxide. Uh, and it's also known, like I said, as a developer. Double process hair cutting is a two-step combination. You bleach the hair up, and then you use hair coloring to get the color that you want on the hair, okay? Uh, the, the labels on the bottle tell you, and a lot of time if you don't learn to read labels, what's gonna happen? you're gonna do a lot of damage to someone's hair because of not reading the labels. Dye removal. It's products used to strip built up color from the hair. It doesn't do anything but just strip artificial color from the hair. It should not change the hair. If it does, then the hair might have been damaged in the process of getting it colored, okay? Uh, fillers. Preparation designed to equalize porosity or deposit a base color in one application. A uh, color filler is usually, you can buy almost in the same uh, colors as the, the uh, hair color. And what you're doing is you, we all have little uh, damaged hair. The, the filler goes in there and closes up those, those damaged areas and the color is able to take on the hair. If you ever notice that your hair does not grow evenly out of your head. It grows some of it thin in some places, some of it thicker in other places. But this is what your color fillers do in dyeing hair. <coughs> Foil technique. The foil technique is coloring or highlighting hair uh, by wrapping it in a foil in order to, foil is a heat producer. You know how you put foil on your a meat at home and put it in the oven and it cooks it fat. Well, that same foil can do the same thing to uh, the specific hair section. This is the foil technique and it highlights the hair faster because it it's produces heat along with the chemical the hair color that you have on the hair, it heats up. 
and they lack that uh, would act faster than just putting hair color on. Freeform technique, also named, known as balage, a balage, the painting of lightener on clean side hair. Uh, some people just take the a lightener, hair lightener, put it in a bowl with the hydrogen peroxide, 10% in volume of uh, peroxide is a first aid. 20 is a developer, and 30 to 40 is a lightener. So there's the difference in them, and you have to know which ones to use when you get ready to use it. Uh, coloring or highlighting techniques used using four to apply product to specific hair section. That's what the four technique is. Preform technique. Oh, I already know, oh, also known as balage, the paint of a lighter on clean style hair. Hair coloring. Industry coin term referring to the artificial hair color products and services. The addition of color on or into the hair share. Uh, use this used with uh, 20 volume hydroperoxide to deposit. Uh, you can use up to 40 according to the degree of lightness you want in that hair. Hair lightening, which is on page 642, the chemical process of diffusing natural or artificial pigment from the hair. In other words, when you say hair lightening, it's almost like bleaching the hair, okay? Uh, highlighting. Page 663, coloring or lightening, some of the strands of the hair lighter than the natural color. So you add strands to make the hair look different because you just want highlights in the hair. Uh, different areas that is darker, lighter than the other areas. But when you comb it, it gives it uh, another total look, okay, hue. The basic name for a color. Hue is the basic name for a color. Like you might have light blue, you might have dark blue. You might have bright red, you might have dark red. Hue is that color, that's the basic, uh, the name of the color that you use. Some people might want their hair flaming red, some people might just want uh, a little redness in the hair. Well, you as a stylist have to be the one to say or do a what strand test, okay? To find out what that what color is going to really be, because some people have different pigments in their hair that it looks one way, but when you apply color, it can turn out another way. Or well, they've done something to their hair that didn't tell you they did. The laws of color. The laws of color, on page 644, a system for understanding color relationship. If you take blue and yellow, it will make green. Okay. If you take blue and orange, it will make brown. Okay. This is the laws of color, how you mix them to use on the person's head in the process of doing hair, giving color, streaking the hair, whatever you do to the hair. Uh, lighteners, which is on page 656. Chemical compounds that lighten the hair by dispersing and diffusing natural pigment. That lightener penetrates into the cortical layer. It's an artificial color, penetrates into the cortical layer. And what it does, it lifts out all the old color that's in the hair, the natural color or store-bought color. It will lift it out. So this is what the lighteners do. You have to be very careful in using them. Uh, low lighting. Coloring some strands of hair darker than the natural hair color. 
Some people have lighter hair. They want uh, maybe streaks or maybe want the whole entire head, hair, head done. Then this is where you mix those dyes. This is the opposite of the hair lightening. You are doing a low lightening, which is uh, darker than the natural color of the hair. So hair coloring is a art. And it's like you're painting a portrait on the head in the process of doing your color. Uh, if you notice that some areas are finer, meaning that the strands are real uh, small, long but small. Some areas are coarser. That means that that area is going to take be harder for color to penetrate than if you were just doing it on the whole head. So this is what you have to look out for when you are doing the color. A uh, line of demarcation. Sometimes a person might go and get a hair color and after they've shampooed and maybe come back in a month or so and want the same color, the same color may not work because it ha will leave a line of demarcation. The new growth has come out and they put the same color on there trying to get it to match up and it doesn't. The only thing they can do then is a recut, but the stylist or the person that's doing the hair has to know that this is what must be done. While we're, you're in school, this is the good part that you learn because coloring hair will soon be back in form in style. Okay, low lighting. Coloring some strands of hair darker than the natural hair. That might be uh, maybe a blonde head or a person with gray hair and they want it uh, low lighting, and it's coloring, just coloring the natural hair darker than what it is. Okay. Uh, off the scalp lighting. These are only used with a uh, color cap, a, a, a preparated color cap. You pull the hair through with a knitting needle or a tool that they made to pull the hair through that because with off the scalp lightning will burn uh let's say off the scalp lightning can be directly on the scalp on the scalp lightning can be on the scalp off the scalp must be pulled through a preparated cap you have a patch test page 662, a patch test, anytime a person get a color, they should do a patch test. A patch test is mostly done behind the ear and in the inner bend of the elbow. If redness occur, then don't use that product. That product can cause allergies, can cause some people to have asthma or whatever. Don't use it. If you see redness, and you're going to wait 24 hours to 48 hours to see if it's going to affect them. Okay. Uh, permanent hair color. This is a color that lightens and deposit color at the same time. And it's single process because they are more alkaline than no lip deposit only colors and are usually mixed with higher volume volume develop. Your developers comes in 10, 20, I'm sticking 30 and 40. Where the higher the volume, the more damage it can do to the hair, but also the lighter it uh, will color the hair or where we take the pigmentation out of the hair. You have to be very careful because if you don't do a hair analysis before you do the color, you might end up with an accident. So you have to be very observant when you're messing with the hair. Uh, Pre-softening, okay. 
pre-lighten it. The first step of a double process hair color, use to lighten natural pigment. That means you are lifting the natural pigment out of the cortical layer and you're depositing uh, the color that the customer wants into that layer. But it's not gonna last forever. It, permanent colors have to grow out. Semi and demi can be uh, four to six weeks shampoo out. And a temporary on the next shampoo, it comes out the hair. Then you store it all over. Um, hashtag. You test for identifying the possibility of allergies to analyze derivative products required by the FDA Food and Drug Administration. 24 to 48 hours before the application of the product. <clears throat> After you open that bottle, oxidation takes place. If you don't use it on, you have to throw it away. Because what it's doing, when oxidation hits on, it makes it stronger, okay? The fumes from it, some people are allergic to it. They smell them and they can't um, cope with the smell. So hydrogen peroxide, the volume that you use in the process of uh, coloring hair, you have to be very careful. You have to take that patch test, like I said, the, the inner elbow or behind the ear, anytime you're applying color. Uh, permanent color, pre-lightening, uh, permanent color, lightening and deposit color at the same time in a single process because they are more alkaline than no lift, deposit only colors that are usually mixed with a higher volume hydrogen peroxide. The 20 volume is the most used uh, peroxide that is a available for most hair when you're using 10 and 40 uh, you're going into levels of trial and error because if you did, haven't did that strand test which is what you should do before you apply color anyway then you uh, might have an accident pre-softening Okay. Process of treating resistant hair for better color penetration. Uh, pre softening, you can use a product for pre softening the hair because some hair, the cuticle scale, <coughs> the cuticle scales are so hard on that hair that it makes it almost impossible for it to absorb into the hair in all areas. Because as you know, we have fine hair, coarse hair uh, on our head, and the cuticle scales lay closer to the shaft than with the fine hair. Fine hair, the cuticle scales will open up and you can deposit the color. This is why a lot of people have uh, different color pigmentation in their hair when they have went to get a haircut. Okay? Um, primary color. Primary colors on page 645, red, blue, and yellow. Colors that cannot be achieved from a mixture or other colors. But those primary colors make every color that we use. Just take a look at a rainbow. If you see a rainbow in the sky. As you see it gradually, you see those colors slightly, they separate, they don't mix. And those colors are the red, yellow, and blue, and then in between, secondary colors. That's the same way we're doing hair color. Uh, you can mix two hair colors with an equal amount of hydrogen peroxide to get a different color, if you choose to do that. If you want to do it straight out the bottom, but, like I said, you take a pre test 
before you do any application of color to anybody's head. And you do that behind the ear, okay, or the bend of the elbow. And then you would determine if it turns red, you know that they're allergic to it. Progressive colors. Hair color, pro <coughs> hair, pro hair color products that contain compound or metallic dyes which build up on the hair. They are not used professionally because if you ever see a person with the hair color or hair color and it looks green, that's because they a dye had a metallic salts in it and it will eat the hair. It will damage the hair very, I mean, real quick. So this is, as you're in this profession, as you go into the shop or in the beauty supply, look at all the products that they have that you're interested in doing that kind of work. It might be hair color, it might be uh, men's mustache. They wear color too. So you have to be just as careful on the men's mustache and their hair as you do the woman's hair. Uh, progressive color. Then you have retouch application. A retouch application is you only put the color on hair that has grown out from the scalp since the last color. You do not let it overlap. Overlapping leaves a line of demarcation. And that line of demarcation, you might have to do the whole head all over again. But you should not let the color overlap. Uh, retouch. Do it to the secondary color. Colors, secondary colors are colors obtained by mixing equal parts of two primary colors. Your primary colors are red, yellow, and black, blue, right? So when you mix two equal parts, you come up with your secondary color, okay? Your secondary colors are a mixture of, like I said, two parts of, you take yellow and red which makes orange, okay? Yellow and blue makes green, okay? Those are your secondary color. This is how you go about mixing your colors when you get ready. And with your hydrogen peroxide, the greater the lighter you want the hair, the volume of the hydrogen peroxide should be higher. And then that way, it won't take so long for it to process. 